Housing and Insurance. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I appreciate the gentleman uh, for yielding the chair of financial services, Mr. Henschelin. Uh, I appreciate his uh, leadership and stewardship uh, on our uh, committee. I'm going to get into the bill in a second, but I, I, I can't let the, the Dominican sister reference go. Um, it's not the Dominican sisters who are uh, using proxy advisors. It's the largest financial uh, 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 um, uh, investors in the world that are using these advisors, which we're going to get into in a little bit. And if you want to talk about sisters, I'll talk about the little sisters of the poor who have been ravaged by Obamacare because they can't practice their faith. If you want to talk about sisters, we're not going to go there today. And uh, we're in a situation where uh, my friends, if you, but you, if, if you listen to the debate, you might go, well, Republicans are asking for a little more, rec a little more regulation in uh, the proxy advisory space. And Democrats miraculously are saying, we don't want any regulation. Well, our concern is that you've consolidated power in two companies that control 97% of the industry. And some have made the claim in the allegation that there might be political motivations behind both or at least one of these massive proxy advisory firms because Glass Lewis is owned by the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund and they might have a political agenda that might affect the recommendations that have a massive impact on American corporate governance. Um, maybe that could be the distinction between the two parties in today's debate. But I want to, we've covered this quite a bit, but I want to go into it again. The role of proxy advisory firms in the U.S. economy um, is incredibly important. It's important stuff. And these firms, they, they counsel pension plans and mutual funds and institutional investors on how to vote their shares. And no one's trying to get rid of proxy advisory firms. We think they're a good thing, but we think they should have a little bit of regulation and a little bit of oversight. I think it's troubling. When you look at the share of institutional ownership um, in 1987, it was 46%. Today, that's grown to 75%, meaning that institutional investors control billions of shares. There was a recent study that was done by Stanford that says that um, asset managers with $100 billion or more um, under their control only make 10% of the decisions on these proxy issues, meaning they outsource 90% of the decisions to one of two firms consolidating great power in these proxy advisory firms. This was pointed out before as well, but again, two firms, 97% of the market share, um, writings, analysis, reports, voting recommendations that affect the fundamental uh, fundamentals of corporate governance, mergers, acquisitions, approval of corporate directors, and shareholder proposals. And what's of greatest concern is that these firms are not free of conflicts of interest. For example, in addition to providing recommendations to institutional investors about how to vote, proxy advisory firms may advise companies about corporate governance issues, rate companies on corporate governance, help companies improve those ratings, and advise proponents about how to frame a proposal to get the most votes. They're playing every side of the issue. They're getting every dollar from anybody who cares about the corporate governance space. They play everybody. And if you want access, you pay. I'm going to give you an example in just a little bit of uh, one of the hundreds of letters that I've received uh, on this issue. But before I do that, I think it's important to go, what are we asking for? What's the radical idea that we've brought to the floor today, which, by the way, had six Democrats support? Mr. Scott commented about his support as well, and I know he had an issue of the cost that this would have on uh, proxy advisory firms, but the CBO, which I rarely quote, but they did a study on this and say this... The, the cost of proxy advisory firms of this bill is minimal, uh, if anything. So I think uh, his concern uh, might be misplaced. But what are we asking to do here? We're asking for accountability. We're asking for transparency, responsiveness, and competition in the proxy advisory space. And by doing that, we'll improve corporate governance. And in the end, we're going to protect investors, specifically Again, this bipartisan bill will ensure that proxy advisory firms 
are registered with the SEC. They'll disclose potential conflicts of interest. They'll maintain a code of ethics and make publicly available their methodologies for formulating their proxy recommendations. Yield the gentleman an additional minute. Gentleman's recognized. I don't know what my friends across the aisle have with maintaining a code of ethics or disclosing potential conflicts of interest or um, instituting an ombudsman to resolve issues that might come up. This is common sense stuff. This is good governance. Um, and I would encourage all of my friends across the aisle uh, to join us. I want to read one uh, part of a letter that I received that I think embodies um, what's going on in um, corporate America. This is from, I'm not going to give the name of the company, but it says, Upon contacting ISS and seeking an explanation on one of their recommendations, we were told there was a firewall between the ISS recommendation group and the ISS group that deals with corporate matters. Ultimately, we were advised that if we were willing to join ISS, which includes payment of a relatively substantial amount of money, we could have input into the recommendations before they were made. So pay for the input. Meanwhile, during our latest discussions, we were again advised that we could avoid some issues, avoid some issues by subscribing. I yield the gentleman an additional minute. Thank you. Recognized. Subscribing to ISS corporate services and thereby having some input before such recommendations were published. Of course, such a subscription would entail big payouts. On the one hand, ISS makes wholly unsupported, unreasonable, in irrational recommendations regarding corporate elections without investigation, regulatory support, or even contact with a victim company. While on the other hand, seeking fees from the victim company for the privilege of in influencing ISS's recommendation. So what you have here, you have the mafia um, on the streets. So lo and behold, your little shop on the street corner, it's burglarized at 10 o'clock one night, and at 8 o'clock in the morning, lo and behold, the thugs come in and go, you want to buy some insurance? You want to buy some protection? Pay up. We'll keep you safe. ISS, Glass Lewis, you pay up, and we can help you with your recommendation. We can help you with your ratings. This is thuggery. Let's have a little common sense oversight in this space. It's a good bill. Uh, and with that, 